everybody, this is Peter, and in this video segment, we're going to do some PCI compliance scanning with Nessus 3. Um, before we get into this, I just want to let you guys know, in order to do this with uh, Nessus, you do need the professional feed from Tenable Network Security. Um, the home feed doesn't include the proper or the appropriate um, plugins that you need to actually do this. So let's get right into this now. We're going to open up and run our Nessus server as administrator, and we'll bring up our client and collect, connect to our local host here. And there's a couple things that you need to know in order to do PCI scanning in order to understand. There's actually a really cool blog post on, uh, on Tenable's website. So we've connected. We're going to actually now create a new policy or add a new policy and we're going to go ahead and call it something easy and obvious, PCI. You know, nice and easy. When we hit the options tab, um, you'll see here we have some sections like safe checks, um, you know, ping the remote host, Nessus TCP scanner. We're going to go ahead and just take off the ping the remote host go into credentials, we'll leave that alone. Now in the plugin selection, I'm going to go ahead and deselect a bunch of plugins because um, I don't want the scan to kind of take forever. Uh, but you'll see when we scroll down that you have a policy compliance section here. Now these filter, these plugins are the ones that I was telling you about that are not included in the, uh, in the home feed and only in the professional feed. But what you see here is these plugins. Now these plugins obviously have to be enabled if you want to do a PCI compliance scan of a Nessus system. Now one thing you need to understand is that the plugins themselves don't actually do any scanning. Um, what they do is monitor your configuration of your policy to actually say, okay, with the options that you have chosen, can this system possibly be compliant or PCI compliant? Okay, so that's important to understand is that the actual filters or plugins, sorry, here do not do any scanning. They kind of just look over your, the config of your policy and what you're using to scan the hosts. All right, so let's go into, um, into our advanced tab <coughs> and configure what hosts we're going to actually scan. All right, so in here, <coughs> we have to choose PCI D DSS compliance as well and go ahead and check the check for PCI compliance. Go ahead and save. All right, so now we're going to actually add in our host. I apologize, we weren't doing it before. And let's go ahead and add in a, uh, a subnet range. So we'll add in 192.168.10.0 class C. We're going to go ahead and scan that entire subnet. Now this scan, obviously scanning the entire subnet could take some time. Um, I've cut part of that video out because I don't want you guys to sit here for you know 20 minutes or 30 minutes and watching that. Um, so we'll go ahead and just start it cuts them out. You'll see we found a couple hosts already with a bunch of ports open um, <clears throat> and we're going to actually see some things come up fairly soon. So what we'll see, actually you'll probably see a couple different things. One, um, what you're going to see is the fact that our configuration is not PCI compliant. So uh, it will not, I guess, fall into, into that category where that system can potentially pass and you'll see we just got a a high risk notification there on uh, host 192.168.10.1 so if we go ahead and highlight our high risk you'll see that we can't be PCI compliant because of uh, um, because the remote web server itself is vulnerable to some cross-site scripting attacks so that's one thing that you see but the important one that I want to show you actually is <coughs> the medium risk vulnerability that comes up here. The PCI compliance test requirements. And you'll see in the plugin output on the bottom there that you have to do a full TCP scan, a full UDP scan, you have to have thorough tests enabled, um, you have to optimize your test and so on and so on in order for this to be a uh, PCI compliant scan. So those filters or plugins that we enabled earlier are actually looking at our, um, our conf the configuration of our policy saying you don't have all this stuff. You're just testing for your standard ports, which is maybe ports uh, 0 to you know 1,024 or whatever it may be. But a full TCP and UDP scan means all 65,500 and so on so on ports. Okay, so that's basically what I want to show you guys, that it is very possible with Nessus 3 to actually perform PCI scans and the cool part like I said is these filters or plugins themselves will tell you hey what you're doing is not compliant if you actually scan a host with this you are not testing it for PCI compliance and that's pretty much it guys that's how you do that with Nessus and obviously you can you know take that further if you're if you're actually doing a real PCI compliant scan but this is just a simple video to actually show you guys how it's done thanks a lot guys we'll see you next time